This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate to heaven. Well, this is Palm Sunday. We join in with Christians all over the world to declare Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us here because this is the Lord's day and we give God praise, honor, and glory for just keeping us. Won't you give God some praise wherever you are because God has kept us through another week from danger seen and unseen. And therefore, you can join me and declare that he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praised. Well, let's meet the Lord in prayer. You and I both know that prayer changes things. Dear God, we come into your presence this morning, thanking you for watching over us last night. Thank you for touching us with the finger of your love, waking us up this morning. And some of us can declare that we woke up this morning with our mind stayed on you. We invoke now, oh God, your presence with us as we hear out of your word, as we praise and worship you because you are worthy to be praised. We pray for those that are sick and shut in, those that have problems that are too big for them. We pray that you'd meet them at the point of their need. Now, oh God, you know that the cloud that's covering all of us is this Corona-19 virus. We need your help. We know that you're bigger than any challenge that we face. We pray for those that have been infected and affected. Pray for those that have been exposed. We pray, oh God, that you would cover us now with your grace and with your mercy and that you would keep us. We pray for those that have lost loved ones and are bereft of spirit, but we still know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Now, oh God, we pray that you would be with us as we hear out of your word, as we praise you and we honor you and give you glory, for you alone are worthy to be praised. Hear our prayer now, incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, just a couple of notices and announcements before we get into the worship experience. Again, let me thank those of you who joined us on Wednesday for our prayer service. We had a wonderful virtual prayer service. Some of you were able to download Zoom and we had that experience for the first time. And let's continue um, to study out of God's word. Let me also thank those of you who have been meeting me daily for noonday prayer because prayer changes things. Ask, it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open. So I want to encourage you to continue to pray and to praise God, even in the midst of this coronavirus 19 storm that we are going through. But we do know that storms don't last forever. We join David, who declares in Psalm 23 that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. That simply means that we're going to come through on the other side. So I ask that you would meet me on Monday as we will again meet for noonday prayer. Let's meet together on Wednesday for our Bible study. I will send you the prompts as it relates to connecting with Zoom. And I will also send you some protocol because now we have to learn how to work in a virtual universe. And so I will send some protocols so that we can be on our best behavior, even though we are in separate locations. Well, thank you again. And my prayers that God will bless you real good. Well, today I am delighted to have two of our fine musicians that will minister to us in music. And that's Rogers, who is on the saxophone, and Lydia, who is on the piano. And so they're now going to render a wonderful selection. And then I will come back and share with you what God has placed on my heart for this Palm Sunday.
Thank you so much, Lydia Rogers. Thank you so much for sharing with us in music. You know, when we get to heaven, there won't be uh, many preaching because we'll all be redeemed. There'll be the heavenly host playing the various instruments and God would have even given me a voice to sing the songs of Zion. Well, let's um, hear out of God's word as we go to the scripture. Our lesson for the morning is found in the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 11. The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Hear now the word of the Lord. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olive, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no man has ever written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it. And we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found the colt outside the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of your grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, precious Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Now, O God, allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be found acceptable in thy sight. It's in the strong, matchless, powerful, omnipotent name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. The title of our subject for this Palm Sunday is The Paradox of Triumph. Somebody say The Paradox of Triumph. Today is Palm Sunday. We call it The Paradox of Triumph because today the crowd will celebrate Jesus. But five days later, on Friday, this same crowd will call for his execution. You do know that many times the same people that will celebrate you, that will tolerate you, that will praise you, will talk about you and tear down your name at another time. And that's why we should never get too excited when people lift us up. We should not get too excited with the praises and accolades of men but I'm only excited when God lifts me up because I want to tell you that when God lifts you up, nobody can bring you down because what God has for you is for you. Well, Jesus now is on his way to Jerusalem. And I want to tell you that even though Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem and he knows that in a real sense that he is marching to his death because just five days later, Jesus will die for your sins and my sins. But even though he is marching towards a difficult and dark time, he still takes time to help people along the way. I'm so glad that in spite of whatever I might be facing and in spite of whatever other persons may be facing, God always has time to meet us at the point of our need. As Jesus is on his way, and you find this in the gospel according to John, um, he is on his way to death. And he takes really 
the difficult and troublesome, dangerous route, he goes through Samaria. You know, Jesus will take a shortcut just to get to you to meet you at the point of your need. And as he goes through Samaria, he meets a woman at the well. And she is one who really needs salvation. Um, she has had a hard life. Um, the Bible says that um, she had five husbands and the one that she's married to is not even her husband. Jesus encounters her and asks her for a drink of water. And she's surprised. She says, Lord, you asked me for a drink? You are a Jew and I'm Samaritan. You know that the Jews and the Samaritans have no dealings. Jesus says, but if you knew who it was that asked, you'd have asked me for water and I would have given you that kind of water that would cause you never to thirst again. And just in this encounter, Jesus breaks down racism and sexism. I'm so glad that God is no respect of persons. Well, you know the story, how Jesus begins to encounter her and inquires about her lifestyle, and she realizes that he is the Messiah, and she goes back and tells the whole village, come meet a man who told me whatsoever I had done. He goes on as he presses his way, and he meets the lame man at the pool of Bethesda. This man had been sitting at the pool for 38 years, and he was waiting for somebody to put him into the, the pool to the end that he might be healed. And, and Jesus asked him a question, and he, he, he queries us this morning. He says to the man, do you want to be made whole? The man begins to ask Jesus, um, uh, not so much to ask Jesus, but begins to tell Jesus about his predicament. He says, Lord, I've been at this pool and I got nobody to put me in the pool. And when I get ready to get in the pool, somebody steps in the pool before me. And Jesus says, that's not what I ask. I just want to know, do you want to be made whole? And you know the story, Jesus heals the man. The man is able to take up his bed. He's able to carry that that was at once carrying him. He presses on, he feeds the 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. And then finally, he gets to the village of his good friend Lazarus and he raises Lazarus from the dead. This is really what got the authorities and the persons in power, um, the high priests and the politicians, this is really what caused them concern now because Jesus was getting really, really popular and people were beginning to follow Jesus. And they realized that as a result of Jesus' pop popularity and his fidelity, that some of the things that they were doing that were not right could be called into question. They were concerned now, and they sought out to crucify Jesus. Here it is. And so in times past, Jesus had decided not to make himself known publicly, but now he decides to make himself known because he knows that if God be for you, he's more than all that can be against you. And so this brings us to Palm Sunday and Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem to declare that he is the Christ, that he is the one that God had foretold would come into the world to save you and I from our sins. Here it is now. I want to suggest, if you're taking notes, you need to know that God makes preparation. Whatever you're going through, God is working it out already. Here it is in Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. As they approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Jesus sends two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And just as you enter it, you will find a colt or a donkey, which no one has ridden. Untie it, bring it to me. And if anyone asks you who needs it, you tell them the master has need of it. Amazingly now, as they go, they find the colt, just as Jesus has said. And they are queried, as Jesus has said. They said, what are you doing with this call? And they said, the master has need of it. And of course, they release the call and they give it to Jesus. I want you to know that whatever challenges you're facing, that God is already making preparations 
for you and for me. And at the right time, God is going to show up and meet us at the point of our need. Here it is. Jesus now um, presents himself. They untie the coat. They put clothes or cloth over the coat. They sit Jesus on the coat. They bring the coat to Jesus. And Jesus is now ready to go into Jerusalem, even though he knows that there are people there that are seeking to kill him. I'm so glad to tell you that whatever danger we're facing, Jesus is willing to march into that danger with us. And I know that many of us, again, are concerned about this pandemic that we're facing, but I want you to know that Jesus is right there in the midst of our pain. There's somebody I know you might be facing a difficult moment. You don't know how you're going to make ends meet. Somebody has just lost their job as a result of the shutdown of the entire government. But I want you to know that Jesus is with you in the point, at the point of your need and of the danger that you're facing. And then finally, what can we do? Um, once we know that Jesus has made preparation for us, once we know that Jesus is with us in the midst of our situation, he's willing to present himself, he's willing to show up, then the only thing you can do is give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. Here it is, as Jesus is coming through, they begin to shout out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he, that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna simply means, Lord, save us. And I don't know about you, but today somebody needs to cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus was making, the people rather, were making so much noise that um, some of the disciples said, Tell these people to be quiet. They're making too much noise. And Jesus said, but if these should hold their peace, even the rocks would cry out. I don't know about you, but God's been too good to me that I don't want any rocks crying out for me because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I've got to give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. Is there anybody here you can declare that you were sick, but God raised you up? Then you owe him some praise. Is there anybody here your money got funny, but somehow God helped you to pay your bills? Then you owe God some praise. And really the fact of the matter is that if he woke you up this morning and started you on your way and gave you the breath of life, then you owe him some praise. No wonder David declares in Psalm 150, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And so I just simply come to tell you that the God that we serve is making preparations for us right now. The God that we serve will present himself in the midst of our situation. And when he shows up, the only thing we can do is give him praise, honor, and glory. Won't you praise God with me? Lord, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you. And we give you glory because our testimony is that there is no God like our God because our God alone is worthy to be praised. Well, God bless you. I'm so delighted to have had this opportunity to share with you on this Palm Sunday. I hope that you will spend some time with your family and simply cry out to them somewhere in the midst of your fellowship, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Well, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. And whatever you do, remember to give God praise, honor, and glory. Let us receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace and his love. You're going in and you're going out and you're down sitting and then you're uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen.